Hey guys, I have an interesting topic today. In the small video presentation today, we would be learning how to calculate portfolio standard deviation and portfolio variance uh, when you have more than two assets. So right, most of us, uh, I'm hoping are familiar with the formula of weight one, sigma one square and so forth. Now today we would learn to calculate portfolio standard deviation in Excel uh, using a little bit of matrix algebra and using the cool uh, Excel function of MMULT. Uh, and then uh, we would also learn a little bit about how do you calculate the risk contribution? How do you calculate risk contribution of the individual components to the total risk? Okay, so what I've done is uh, I've already put in some numbers here and I am going to have make use of these three separate sheets. Uh, first, we will do the calculation on two assets. Then we will repeat the same calculation on three assets and then five assets. And hopefully this is going to be a good enough practice for you to understand the concept. Okay, so here's the setup. The setup is we have assets A and B, we have their weights, we have their standard deviation. Now what we have here is a correlation matrix and observe, uh, let me just use my software to just a minute. What's happening here? Okay, got it. So, observe the correlation between A and A is 1, right? And the correlation between B and B is also going to be 1. You typically find all the diagonal correlations to be 1 in a correlation matrix. What's important for us is correlation of A and B, which is 0.7. And it has to be the same number as the correlation of B and A. So, that's again basic. Uh, most of you probably know this. Now this is a variance covariance metric. Now what is this number? AA 0.025. So when you're calculating covariance of AA, that is nothing but variance of A, correct? So this number 0.025 is nothing but square of that 5 percentage. In the same fashion, this number has to be square of this 8 percentage. Now how do you get covariance of covariance of A and B, it is nothing but uh, the first sigma of A, sigma of B into correlation of A and B. So look at the formula. So sigma of A, sigma of B into the correlation that gives you covariance of A and B, right? So that's how you make your covariance. Now what you want to do is you want to calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio or the variance of the portfolio. Now there is one formula that most of us are comfortable with which is weight 1 sigma 1 square plus weight 2 sigma 2 square plus 2 weight 1 weight 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 correlation and these three terms are nothing but essentially the covariance right so that's the formula for variance that's one way of doing it. An alternate way of doing it is this particular formula that you see on my screen and this formula says you take this this is using the matrix algebra it says you take the the row vector for all the weights then you take your variance covariance metric and then you take a column vector for all the weights and you multiply them and if you remember a little bit from our like school basic algebra uh, in matrices it's important that you multiply them in the same sequence correct so we are going to multiply these three matrices and the really cool function in Excel is this MMULT which allows you to multiply them directly and gets you a solution. So here is how I am going to use it, observe carefully. So this is a formula, it looks very fancy but it's not. So what I am going to do is I am going to delete the formula, okay, just a minute. I'm going to delete the formula and I'm going to rewrite the formula so you get some understanding on what's happening here. So MMULT, now we have to choose those two arrays. Now understand that this particular array here, this is in given in a column vector but what we need is we need this row vector, right? So what we can do is we can make use of the transpose formula. So transpose and then choose this right so automatically that row is now converted to a column so that's my first 
set of data that I select. The second set of data that I'm going to select is this data and then bracket close. So you've kind of multiplied the this term with this term. Now, if you remember again, what are how do you denote this particular uh, matrices or metrics? So we have uh, so when I write this as 40 and 60 percent, right? A matrix is like this. What do we have? We have one row and we have two columns. And how about this particular matrices? So here we have matrix. Here we have two into two. So the sim simple rule with matrices is it is okay to multiply as long as these two numbers are matching and your resultant matrix is going to be a 1 into 2 matrix, correct? But again, Excel is going to take care of you. So you don't have to worry about this stuff too much. So this part is multiplied. We've multiplied the transpose of the weights and we've multiplied the variance covariance, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another MMULT here at the beginning because we want to add in the third one so this now becomes one term and then comma and then select this but this time in a column vector directly and then bracket close now it seems like a okay formula the only thing uh, we have to be careful with now is when you press enter like typically in array like this you don't press enter directly uh, you press control plus shift plus enter together so i'm using a mac and Hopefully the same keys will work for me. So I'm going to do control shift enter and it kind of did the job for us. It is getting us a variance of 0 0.405 and then the standard deviation is going to be uh, under root of the variance. So you say raise to 5, you get your standard deviation number. Okay, this was the part 1. Now, can we do this on 3 assets? The answer is yes. We follow the exact same process. Okay, so I'm going to build that MMULT formula for you one more time uh, just so that you get an understanding of what we were trying to do. So is equal to MMULT bracket open. We need that to be a row vector. So I'm going to say transpose uh, select this part comma select this entire variance covariance metric. So the multiplication of these two terms is done. Then go at the beginning, open another MMULT, uh, bracket open. Now this becomes one term, comma. Now we just select the column vector as it is. And then control shift enter. I made a mistake. Okay, transpose, bracket close, comma this. Hopefully it works now. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I forgot to put in a bracket close sign there. But this is again your variance using the MMUT approach. And once you kind of practice a little bit, so I am not good with this formula, uh, but I think it will take a little bit of practice. But once you practice few, then you don't even have to do it backwards. You can just, you know, build the formula directly. Now let's try this on five assets. It's going to be fun. So same story. I have assets, I have their weights, I have standard deviation. Now I have a variance covariance metric. And then we want to build, you know, the make use of that MMULT formula. So let me do that here. So e is equal to MMULT bracket open. So first transpose, you take the row vector, convert that to column. This time I'm not going to forget the huh, closing the bracket. So that's done. Then comma, what is the second array? So that's my variance covariance matrix. So I'm going to choose that. Uh, that's done as well so bracket close this part is well taken care of now open MMULT again and then put a comma here and now choose the the column vector directly bracket close control shift enter job done that's your variance so what it requires is just a little bit of practice and then you know even if you have a 20 asset portfolio of course, collecting the data is going to be a big challenge, but if you've been able to build that variance covariance metrics, uh, then you just use your MMULT formula and it's going to do the job for you. Now, what we would learn next is once we've learned to calculate variance, the second part, how do you calculate the risk contribution? For example, look at this. The total variance is 0 0.405. But how much of that variance is coming from A and how much of that variance is coming from B? That's what we want to learn now. 
So now to calculate risk contribution, the formula you have to use is what I have quoted here. Let me bring that in the center. Weight of A into weight of A into covariance of A with A. Then weight of A into weight of B into covariance of A with B. Now observe the term. I can always take the weight of A common and keep it outside. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. We'll just because it's Excel, so we don't have to worry so much. Uh, so just take those weights, multiply with covariance, add them up, job done. Okay. So again, we will see if we can do it together. Uh, I have already built that schedule, but I'm going to uh, delete that now. Okay, just so that we get decent practice here. So E is equal to weight of A into weight of A into covariance of A with A. Okay, then weight of A into weight of B into covariance of A with B. And then I'm going to add up the two terms. All right, now this particular uh, screenshot that I have here, it's for a portfolio with three assets. Now we just have two assets. So we add up these two terms, uh, we take a total and the risk contribution is coming out to be 0.10. So out of 0 0.40, 0 0.10 is coming from A. Let's look at B now. Same formula is equal to weight of B into weight of A into covariance of A and B. Then again is equal to weight of B into weight of B. Oops, I made a mistake. Into weight of B. into covariance of B with B and then again I'm going to add up the two terms so I'm just putting a sum formula and the contribution is coming out to be 0.297 now what I'm going to do is if these are my risk contributions okay I'm going to add them up and I'm going to hope that total of these two is equal to the variance so e is equal to sum this number plus this number and it's coming out to be 0 0.4048 observe your variance is also the same number if I fix my decimal settings it's 0 0.405 and we can always check is equal to this number is equal to this number <coughs> I'm sorry and if the excel says it's right it's right we've done this correctly so what do we learn from this is we learn that fine my total variance is 0 0.40 but how much of that is coming from A and B and observe a big chunk of your variance is actually coming from B, correct? And if you think why, because even look at these numbers, the B has a larger standard deviation. So of course it is going to contribute larger to the risk. Okay. Now the same stuff could be applied to three assets, but now this time I have put in a shortcut, right? So I have built a single formula or a formula like this which you can copy paste and do the risk contribution uh, this file would be available on the Fentry learning management system for all the users uh, of the CFL level 3 curriculum to download so you can download the file and also look it up so observe this now uh, the total of this is going to be same as the total of this so we know the risk contribution and the same could be applied even for the five factor and again it's going to match up so the two totals are going to be true so that's how the risk contribution is calculated and that is how you calculate the uh, standard deviation of the portfolio when you have multiple assets using a little bit of uh, using the matrix algebra there was a mosquito here okay all right thank you very much guys i hope you liked the video uh, and if you have any comments or questions, put them in the chat box. I'll try to answer to the best of my capabilities.